Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about the importance of understanding that it's never too late to reinvent yourself. When we are kids, we all have huge dreams and plans, but oftentimes, as time goes by, life happens and those dreams become distant wishes that we hope we had made come true. The truth is, it's never too late to reinvent yourself and become the person you've always wanted to be. It doesn't matter if you're 16 years old or 70 years old. Each day brings a new opportunity and a fresh start to make changes to your lifestyle or to make a long fulfilled dream happen and blossom into the best version of yourself. Some of the world's greatest leaders gained success much later in life. One of those people was the founder of KFC, Colonel Sanders. At the age of 65, he began Kentucky Fried Chicken. He was rejected over a thousand times before finding a taker for his chicken recipe. Today, the company profits more than 16 billion in revenue. Reinventing yourself is a lifelong project which we must all undertake, and those who have the courage to begin not only win, but flourish with a life of no regrets. As George Bernard Shaw quotes, Life isn't about finding yourself. Life is about creating yourself. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break. What advice do you have for anyone that is afraid to follow their dreams and take that next, take their dreams to that next level? They're afraid, they're not seeing results. What would you say to them to encourage them to live their dreams? If you're already doing what you love, you've got success. And if, if you haven't reached this level you think you want to get to, then you're going to have to work harder. Like you're gonna have to do things that you were not doing. The things that got you to where you're at are not gonna be enough now. You're gonna have to add to that. You gotta get comfortable being uncomfortable. Wardrobe provided by H&M. Next up on the show, we have Canadian stand-up comedian, Russell Peters. Russell was number three on the Forbes list of the world's highest paid comedians and became the first comedian to get a Netflix stand-up special. Russell, thank you so much for being on the show today. How are you doing? I'm good. Can you hear me now, Daryl? I can hear you. We had some technical difficulties, but it's working now. We sorted it out. We're all good there. So thank you for making this happen. And I just want to dive into it. So everyone knows you as this household name, this huge comedian. So I want to talk, like, bring it back to the beginning and when you decided you were going to pursue comedy. I mean, I started in 1989. I didn't really have any plans to do anything else with my life. So it's kind of one of those things that just happened. Mm hmm. And I read somewhere that you were one of the first South Asian comedians. So is that true? And also, the, was it I am the, not one the, of, I am the. You are the, okay, the. the. <laughs> was it difficult kind of getting into the industry at that time with the lack of diversity or was it intimidating? <clears throat> well, there's nobody in my family that's in the entertainment business. And in 1989, you tell me what you saw on TV. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we we were an invisible minority and I wasn't doing it to prove a point I was just doing because I wanted to be a comedian mm -hmm. and you know in 1989 what was your first major big break that you had that kind of you know catapulted your career there was no major big break in 1989 no <laughs> no no breaks came until I mean my first little break came in like 95 when I shot a comic special for CBC and that was in 1995. Then I got another special in 1997. And then I never got another special again until 2003. And that's the one that everybody knows me for. Oh, I see. And I know there was a comedian by the name of George Carlin who inspired you early in your career. So let's talk about, you know, how he inspired you. I mean, he was just, you know, he was the, he was the guy that I would listen to all the time because of like the way he played with words. He was, uh, he reminded me of like a really dope rapper, but he was definitely not a rapper at all. <laughs> His wordplay was incredible. Mm -hmm. And I know he encouraged you to get on stage. Were you ever, I always feel like when I see you on stage, you're always just at ease and you're, you're very confident. Even when I see you at red carpets, very confident. So were you ever scared when going on stage? Cause I'm sure there were moments. Yeah, it, it happens all the time. I just. It's called, that's why it's called a game face. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And do, do you have a kind of way to calm yourself down? Because I know for me, I people say that I'm always calm, but I'm always freaking out <laughs> deep down inside. I'm always like panicked, but you wouldn't you know. You seem panicked. Here, but like, do you have a, a way? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I just I, I don't get it. If that's as far as I'm concerned, you're way too into your head at that point. And then you're never going to defeat yourself. I mean, you're you're, you're never going to get past yourself. You are you're your own worst enemy. So you immediately it's for me to, it's kind of like if you see that video of a woman who throws her infant into a swimming pool <laughs> and then the baby just goes under and then pops up and starts swimming I'm like what the hell it's instinct <clears throat> <laughs> you know on the path to success there's obviously wins and losses and as you said you didn't have a major big break immediately so how did you kind of push through the failure in the beginning you just you just do it you don't have you see, I'm not from the generation that expects things to happen. That's this new generation that's like, if I do this, this will happen. It's like, I'm from the generation of, if you do this enough, maybe something can happen, but most likely not. I'm from the negative generation. What's one best piece of advice that someone gave you maybe in your career that kind of motivated you through a hard time? Because I'm sure there were, a comedian is not something as, you know, in 1989, you didn't really hear about that many comedians. And obviously you're su very successful now. So, you know, did you have something that kind of motivated you and pushed you through during those times? Yeah, I just didn't want to work for anybody. Mm -hmm. My goal was to never have a job where somebody told me what to do. I'm not good with authority. So, it's always, I've always challenged authority and questioned authority. And no matter what the situation was in my life, I always questioned everything. My parents would take me to church when I was a kid. And I'd be like, no, this is dumb. I'm not going to do this. <laughs> and, you know, I'm sure when you were first in the industry as well, I'm sure money did not come easily. So did it take you a long time to kind of build your success over the years and really get paid for your craft. Now you're making millions, you're on the Forbes list. So was it was it a difficult process in, in the beginning? And what would you say for those people that are maybe not seeing success right away in their own careers? Listen, if you're doing stand up comedy because you think you're going to get rich, I suggest you quit immediately because that's not how this game is. I, I never, ever expected to make money. It was always like I just wanted to not work for somebody. So for me, the goal was always to be independent. And if I was broke and independent, I was happy with that. As long as my bills just got covered, I was good with that. But um, if you're doing this because you think you're going to get rich, please get out of my business immediately. You don't need to be in our industry. <laughs> That's actually very true. You know, in the in the beginning of every industry, especially in the entertainment industry, for me as well, you don't make money in the beginning. Disclosure for everybody. And it takes a long time to build up and make money. And when you do, it's like, wow, I get paid for this. This is amazing. So I can completely yeah. uh, relate to that. You know, one thing I really like about you is you give back to the community. I know you also have a scholarship fund. So let's let's talk about that and the importance of giving back. I uh, well, here's the thing. So I, the school I went to, I got I went to Chinku for grade 9 and 10. I got kicked out because they thought I was slow. And then I got sent to North Peel, which was historically considered the dummy school. <laughs> but that school actually saved my butt because it, it had teachers that cared about the students and they wanted you to learn things. They weren't just worried about you getting the right number on your paper. They wanted you to know what you were doing. And I always appreciated North Peel for that. And I think it's now called Judith Diamond, mm -hmm. which makes no sense to me because <laughs> that woman had nothing to do with that school, but whatever. Um, uh, but they, that school was always good to me and it kind of gave me, they encouraged me to do whatever I wanted to do. And so I've always, when I got in a position to help them, I, I thought I would because it's full of kids with the, from lower, lower income families and, and probably with not that much hope. So if I can provide somebody with a little, a little, sh a little shining light for them to, to shoot for, then I'm going to do that. Mm -hmm. And have you had a chance to meet any of these kids that have um, had your scholarship? And have you seen a change in their lives now? I get emails from I got emails from a couple of students that, that received the uh, scholarship and um, saying that they're doing what they you know, wanted to do, and that I, you know the scholarship kind of changed their life because it made them made it able for them to go to college. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. And you know, 
You're, you've been in the industry for over 30 years. What does success mean to you? Because you've seemed to achieve so much success and you know, after a while, I'm sure it becomes normal. So what does success really mean to you at its core? I don't know. I, I really don't know what success is. I think success is just it is doing what you love. I think that's ultimately what success is. And if you're doing what you love and you're still broke, that's fine. You're still successful in my eyes. <laughs> that, that's very true. As, as long as you're following your passion, because there are people that get paid a lot of money and yep. uh, they're <laughs> unhappy. So I guess yeah, it's definitely following your passion. And last but not least, you know, our show is all about inspiration. That's why I created this platform to inspire people to live their best life and show success stories like yours. So what advice do you have for anyone that is afraid to follow their dreams and take that next take their dreams to that next level they're afraid they're not seeing results what would you say to them to encourage them to live their dreams if you're already doing what you love you've got success and if if you haven't reached this level you think you want to get to then you're going to have to work harder hmm. like you're going to have to do things that you were not doing the things that got you to where you're at are not going to be enough now. You're going to have to add to that. You got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I think that's very, very true. And, you know, what are your current projects right now? What are you working on? Um, <clears throat> let's see. I think I, I just booked. I don't know if that's announced yet. I can't say it. But, um, I got a movie coming out in the fall. Oh, wow. called, uh, remember Clifford the Big Red Dog? Yes, I do. You're dressed like him today. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> um, well, they did. They we did this movie a couple of years ago, and because of COVID, it never came out last year. So it's going to come out um, this fall, and it's a children's kids movie, and uh, I play a, a guy named Malik the Magician. Very nice. Very exciting. Well, thank you, Russell, so much for being on the show today. I know you're really busy. Thank you for making this happen. And I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you soon. And congratulations on all your success. Thanks, Daryl Roy. All right. Thanks so much, Russell. It's been a pleasure. Bye, and hope to see you soon. Thanks. All right. Bye. Bye. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook.